Martha Burke, author of Your Voice, Your Vote, The Savvy Woman's Guide to Politics, Power, and the Change We Need. Welcome back. Good to see you again. Thank you. Good to be Let's here. Let's talk about some veterans' issues, and we're going to do this a couple of different ways. There are, there are uh, for women, lots of different angles here. There were women who serve. There are women who are spouses who have husbands or sons that serve, or nieces, cousins, who knows, whatever the family male member is. But let's take, uh, for women who were serving uh, first, what is not happening in the political landscape on either party, in your view, to serve women who serve in the military now? What, what's fallen down with both parties? Oh, the biggest thing that is not happening for women is doing something about the rate of sexual assault and rape, rape in the military. It is up 30% just over the last year, Gene. Wow. And I just got through With the all look. the awareness. With all the awareness, Panetta, the Secretary right. of Defense, has announced he's going to crack down on the culture of the service that says don't report it, mm -hmm. you know, or you'll get mustered out or they won't believe you or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I just, this morning, reviewed both party platforms to see if they even mention the rate of sexual assault and rape in the military and neither party mm -hmm. says a word about it. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest thing that is not getting addressed. Interesting. What's the, what's the upshot of that for women? Because at some point, of course, you have this happen, the services aren't there to help you transition back into civilian life. What's the upshot for women who have had a tragedy in military settings and coming back to civilian life? Well, unlike something like an IED that hits you on the side of the road, you can't see it. But it does lead to, to post-traumatic stress disorders in the same way it can last for years. It can last a lifetime because you know, the typical way women are treated after a rape or a sexual assault is it was their fault or it didn't happen mm -hmm. or the old standby, she asked for it. Right. Right. And it's no different in the military. It is a national scandal, really, Gene. Mm -hmm. And why neither party is addressing it. Have you heard one candidate say a word about it? No, you haven't. I don't think so here, that's for sure. So now, you know, again, now these women are considered veterans, right? They're home things are happening. In those two party platforms, what did you discover about veterans and, and female veterans in the services and where are we coming up short on that end of it? Well, too? the party platforms are almost identical on veteran services. They all want to serve our fighting women and men, or they say men and women. Uh, they want to make sure that veterans have the services they need and, and blah and blah and blah. It, it, probably one person could have written both platforms. There's not a dime's worth of difference. What do you, what do you attribute that to? That, 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 I mean, these are two very d different philosoph philosophical approaches. Mom, apple pie, and veterans, but Gene, uh. Where the big differences are are active women in the military right now. Uh, most assuredly in opening combat jobs to women because the Obama administration has opened up some jobs and intends to open more. Mm -hmm. The Republican platform flatly states they're against that. They want to review the policy and probably overturn it. Mm -hmm. So that is a big difference between the parties vis-a-vis -vis women in the military. There is another one, and that is don't ask, don't tell. Most people don't think of that as a women's issue, but it is. Here's a statistic that I think will, will surprise our viewers. It certainly surprised me. Women constitute 17 to 20 percent of the military, depending on the branch of the service. They were fully 50 percent of the folks mustered out under don't ask, don't tell. No kidding. Yes. Huh. So lesbians were targeted for getting mustered out, violating the terms of don't ask, don't tell. Now, as we know, Obama has overturned that policy, mm -hmm. but Romney says he will reinstitute it. Interesting. So that's a big difference. Sure, that's a huge difference right there. Let's spin this around a little bit for women who are the spouses of those who serve. What's your sense of the, where the parties come down for those who are holding it down at home? Are they getting what they need? Uh, what, we know the answer to that. No one's getting what they need, certainly. But what are the differences for women that are home with a spouse's serving? Well, I think the differences are in the support system mm -hmm. that is given uh, in terms of child care. We don't have enough because a lot of these women have to work. You know, the military doesn't pay all that much, Jean. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't have enough child care on the bases. That would be true for men as well, I have to say. Uh, but women seem to 
have to provide more emotional support to the extended family when there is a person in the military. It's just, again, back to that culture. Sure. You know, I remember hearing years ago <clears throat> on a, a NPR program, there's a very troubling thing that happens when someone's about to deploy, a man's about to deploy. Oftentimes in those dynamics between that wife and the husband, there's a huge fight because it's easier to let go of that person going overseas. Mm -hmm. However, what the show made clear is if the worst happens and that spouse's life is lost overseas, that's your last memory. And the show made a really interesting point that it's at that very moment when you have a widowed spouse, then everybody just goes away in the military, right? You know, you, you have close friends and all that kind of a thing, but that's a real problem I'm hearing in little bits and pieces is, is women who are widowed from warfare. What's your, what's your sense of how we can help the women in that situation? Well, there needs to be continuing support for say at least a year, year and a half. And you're right, oftentimes when that flag comes off the coffin and the coffin goes down, that's it. Mm -hmm. And the housing is gone, uh, the schooling is gone, kids have to go to a new school. The whole infrastructure of that person's life is gone. Now, that happens to men too, Gene. But what we have to remember is there are so many more men deployed mm -hmm. that it's happening to women more often. I think that is the difference. Right. But we talk a lot about supporting our veterans and our military families, and we don't really do that. Mm -hmm. on the last question on that, do you sense a difference in the parties on how we uh, support widowed uh, uh, women? There's the only one difference that I can see in the platforms. Again, I'm probably one of four people on earth that's read <laughs> both of them. But th this is something I wonder about, and I can't say what the plan is, but the Republicans say they're going to replace the career people in veteran services with political appointees. Now, what does that mean? I don't know, and I don't think anyone else does, but I think we need to be very careful about replacing career people who have dealt with these issues for maybe 15, 20, 25 years as a career mm -hmm. with somebody that is an appointee who maybe gave a lot of money to a campaign. And that happens. It does. Absolutely. Martha Burke, once again, thank you, and we'll see you next time to continue with this very interesting conversation. Always a pleasure. You got it.